Hello students, welcome to my channel Chemistry with Chemist. So today I have come up with a new topic on solid state. I hope you have liked my previous video. So please watch my video till the end so that you can understand the topic clearly in my channel. Let's start with a new topic today. Today I have come up with two three new topics. Where the first topic that we will be discussing is the types of packing. Okay. Now when we talk about packing see this is the arrangement of crystal which you can see here now if you take a sphere or atom as a reference here now it is this atom then you can see that this atom is being touched by one two three four atoms or spheres directly okay so this one two three fours they are touching so this kind of packing style is known as square close packing okay so a square means four so that's why we have square close packing okay now the next type we have is see if you consider this atom then this sphere is touched by one two three four five six space directly so this kind of style of packing is known as hexagonal close packing in the same way you have some other types of packing also but that is not so important for the syllabus you just have to remember these two types of packing okay and the next topic that we have is voids okay the voids means the site or holes that is present in a crystal that means if there is any gap if we can call it as if there is any gap that is present then that is known as voids now if you can see that clearly here see if i will show it to you here then say this is the void gap so this is one spear two spear and these are the three spears which are touching each other then a small gap is created here in the middle so this gap is nothing but this is known as voids okay now when we talk about voids then we have two types of voids one i have given here tetrahedral and one more we have octahedral that we will do in the next slide now tetrahedral void means if this gap created by three spheres okay so this is an example of tetrahedral void so once again i am showing so you have this right so there are three spheres so they will create one gap here okay. this gap will consider as a circle here okay. let's consider it as a circle so this circle gap circular gap this is known as void okay now next what i will do is i will i will consider this as the center Okay. from here to here i'll take the radius this radius i will mark it as capital r and for this void also there is a circle here okay think this is the void this is the center and this is the radius the radius of the void i will take as small r once again i'm saying the radius of the atoms i'm taking at capital r and the radius of the void void also will consider to be a circle okay and if i take the radius i will take it as small r if i take the measurement then small r divided by capital r will be equal to 0 0.225 you have to remember this formula derivation is not required you remember this formula sometime you may get questions on this okay in the next in the same way we have the next thing that is octahedral voids octahedral means six so six how it will be see this black color part which you are observing imagine they are in the front side okay so they are in the front side and in the same way you have three spheres on the back side okay so there are three little back sides so this front side and back side they will create a gap in the middle so that gap which is created in the middle from three atoms at the front side and three atoms at the back side that gap is known as octahedral void okay now in the same way suppose if you consider this sphere means this to be capital r and the void whatever is created that to be the radius to be small r then again we have a formula here r by r is equal to 0 0.414 so if it is tetrahedral void if it is tetrahedral void then r by r is equal to 0 0.225 and if it is octahedral void then r by r is equal to 0 0.414 you can practice one or two numericals based on this voids okay students I hope I am clear to all of you. Let's move on to the next topic. Okay, now next topic is the radius ratio. It is same like what we have learned in voids. 
so when we talk about radius ratio what we will consider is we will consider the anions okay will be surrounding a cation okay so let me erase this okay the anions will be surrounding the cations so, so these are the anions and i will draw one cation in the middle so these are the cations okay so what we have is see this is the radius of anion and this is the radius of cation so r plus and r minus okay so when you divide r plus with r minus then this is known as radius ratio so the definition says the radius of the cation to the radius of anion is known as the radius ratio and we consider that a cation is always surrounded by anions okay am i clear to all of you now the next topic we have is the coordination number now coordination number means the number of nearest neighbor which surrounds a given atom okay now i have taken one atom as a consideration here let me use a different ink so i have taken this atom as a consideration okay this one now this atom if you see properly is surrounded by how many one two three four five am i clear so the atom which is present at the center is surrounded or directly in contact with one two three four five space that's why the coordination number for this atom will be five so coordination number is nothing but a given atom surrounded by how many atoms am i clear here if you see the coordination number is four am i clear okay so in the same way suppose you have like this suppose you have big big space then you may have coordination number three also okay four in that way now the most important part is what is the relation between a radius ratio and coordination number so if i have to explain you the relation between radius ratio and coordination number then you have to understand these two figures okay if you look here i have made a cation which is small in size if you look here i have made a cation which is bigger in size so this cation is surrounded by one two three four five six anion and this cation is surrounded by one two three four anion that means what you are observing is if the size of cation increases the number of anion also you need more to surround that am i clear am i clear to all of you you can see from this figure if the size of cation increases then the size of anion also or the number of anion also is required more so we can say that radius ratio if it increases then the coordination number also increases okay on this relation we have one table which you need to remember and you may get questions from this let's see, check out here see if the radius ratio is between 0 0.155 to 0 0.225 then the coordination number is 3 okay and what will be the structure of the atom it will be triangular if the radius ratio increases see if it is up to 0 0.414 coordination number now becomes 4 okay you get tetrahedral in the same way if the radius ratio keeps increasing the coordination number also keeps increasing and the size also changes if it is 6 it is octahedral if it is 8 it is cubic okay in this way you can draw a relation between radius ratio coordination number and you can predict the type of structure okay students thank you for watching my channel please do subscribe share this video and do not forget to like this video thank you dear students